Knitting. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a leek and bacon quiche. I've already started um, chopping my leeks but I just thought I'd show you how to do this. I literally put that on there and top and tail and then throw that away. To slice, chop my leeks I literally come down the leek like this and then you can quite easily chop through so that's very easy to do now I want these fairly fine but I don't want them to disappear completely into my quiche because we're going to saute these in a moment um, and make them all nice and juicy with our bacon Okay, so that's my leeks chopped. That's really easy if you've got one of these balls with the spikes on. I can do just about any vegetable on here, so it's absolutely brilliant. Okay, the next job we're gonna do is to saute our, I'm using lard on this here. They're just little bits of chopped bacon. So, if you can get them, great. If you can't, then just go with um, rashers of bacon um, and then just cut them up finely. Now on a very high, well, quite a high heat, I'm just going to let the bacon start to sizzle. We want the juice from these to go into our quiche. I'm using the wok just because it's easier for me to handle. Um, I tend to knock a lot of things out of the frying pan, so a lot of things like this I do on here. The problem on this little cooker here, as you can see, is spinning around, which isn't all that clever. Okay, we just get them cooking nicely, and then we're going to poke the leeks in. That oh, smells beautiful. Here we go. Right, once these are really having a good sizzle away, I'm going to put my leeks in all at once. I'm going to add to that about a teaspoonful of garlic and I put Eshelot in. You don't have to. But I quite like that for flavour. That is absolutely gorgeous. So all we're going to do is sauté this down now, all together. We don't need burn, and we still want some structure to our leeks. I'm going to pop in some pepper and just a little sprinkling of salt if you don't get those lard on um, we'll put out some salt I'm using the low salt ones but a lot of these or if you're using um, I don't know English bacon or whatever it can get quite salty so just going to saute these down a bit because this is going to be the base of the flavour for my quiche I'm surprised I'm doing this without making too much mess at the moment. I've got a few bits of leek <laughs> that have come out. Very nice. So, just sauté down to the amount you like. And I think mine are really where I want them to be. So, I'm now going to put these to one side to cool down and I'm going to crack on and make my pastry. And I'm not going to show you pastry. I've covered pastry lots of times. However, I will put it in the recipe at the end of the video. And um, I'm going to be using all butter for this recipe, for the pastry. All butter. Um, I'm going to make 500 grams of pastry. So it's going to be 
500 grams of um, all-purpose flour or self-raising if you're happy. If you don't, all-purpose plus two teaspoons of baking powder. Dash your salt and the ratio is always half fat to flour. So I'm going to be using 250 grams of butter. I'll see you when I've made the pastry. Okay, I've made my pastry. So now what I want to do is line my tins. I have a great big one here um, that I'll be giving <laughs> to my sons as usual. Then I have these beautiful little things here that a friend of mine bought me. Um, thank you, Melissa. And I told you I would use these. So here we go. I have flour because I need to flour my board. Now this is huge and it's as big as my biggest circle here plus the sides. So I need to bear that in mind while I'm rolling my pastry, which I have here. I've literally just made this. Um, as I said, I'm not, I wasn't gonna show pastry today because I have um, pot pies coming up. Um, I already have a short crust pastry um, recipe online. Uh, I did get a question about that actually uh, from a Mrs. C. Um, let me tell you that the pastry um, that I've made on the other video, I think I made all lard, um, but the ratio is half fat to flour. So it doesn't matter whether you're using lard, whether you're using vegetable um, shortening, uh, or if you're using all butter, the ratio is the same, half fat to flour. You can just crack on with that. Um, if you haven't already got a pastry recipe, there's one on there. But I will add this on the bottom of the, um, on the end of the video, so that you've actually got a recipe, um, the one that I'm using here. Okay, Ooh. just keep this moving because I don't want it to stick to my side. Um, as you know, things go wrong quite often when I'm baking. However, um, I'm gonna try and get this big enough that I don't have to patch it because quite often um, I underestimate the size of it and yeah, it's not good, is it? So here we go. Whack that over my rolling pin. Um, I'm gonna have to turn this around because I haven't left enough that side. There you go. And poke that across, there we are. Just ease it in down your sides of whatever it is you're making your quiche in. I love this tin because it's got a loose bottom um, and it's so easy to take out. Okay, we have that in. Now what I need to do, oh, making holes, is trim this around. So taking my knife, we're just going to go around the edge of the pie plate, like this. Um, I'm doing it right at this end here because it tends to sort of shrink down or go back into the tin. So just trim it off. You can see I've missed a tiny bit there, so I do need to patch as is usual for me. Decoration and presentation, I need to keep working on. <laughs> right, this will bear another roll out, so I'm going to put it back into my tin. Now we've got this lined, what we need to do is blind bake this now for about 15 minutes. I wouldn't go any longer than 15 minutes regardless of what other recipes tell you, because once we've filled this, we've got to put it back in the oven, um, and we're gonna put it in for around half an hour. Um, if we cook this for any longer than 15 minutes, as it is, um, we're gonna come out with hard or burnt pastry, and I'm not keen on that. 
All we're doing is by baking this so that we don't get too much of a soggy bottom going on there. You need just enough paper, just enough paper to go into the bottom of that or into that. It's not rocket science, you just cut off a bit and then we're going to just put it in. You saw that I made some holes in the bottom there, I just don't want it to rise too much. This I struggle with big time. It's a bit like cling film for me when I'm when I'm wanting to blind bake. But we'll get there. There we go. Okay, here I've got some uh they could bill de cuisson in France. Um, and they're just really weights. You you can use these if you've got them, and if you haven't, then don't worry. Just put some dried beans or something in, just to hold it in place while you bake this. My cases are now lined baked. Now all I need to do is get these out. <laughs> and I can assure you, this is not an easy feat for me. This is something I would normally get my husband to help me with. We look all not too shabby and in. So, oh look at that. I am amazed. I don't think I've ever done it that well, ever. Got a couple and they're, they're hot. So that's those. I'm gonna leave those over here now to cool down. So here we have a beautiful pastry case and our bacon and our leeks have all cooked down nicely and they're all cool enough to go into my pastry case. So I'm just gonna load this up. I've already prepared the little ones um, and I've got to tell you, Melissa, I'm going to struggle to get some egg in that. <laughs> I've slightly overfilled them, but I'm sure they'll be beautiful all the same. I'm going to use this bowl here because it's got a tipper on the edge. Or you could use a jug, whatever you're comfortable with. So the first thing I'm going to pop in here are four medium-sized eggs without the shell, preferably. So just give them a little whack, that's it, and pull them apart. And I've got 200 uh, mils of heavy cream. If you're in France, then it's um, creme entière, and it's a minimum of 30% fat. Otherwise, not good for this recipe. Just to add a little bit extra into here, I've got some Roquefort, and this is creamy Roquefort. So as I beat this, this is all gonna break down. Now I'm not putting a lot in, just a little bit for taste. You can use a little bit of cheddar, just put, I don't know, a small handful of cheddar, um, just to help lift that flavor just a tad. Into that, bearing in mind that I've already seasoned the leeks, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of pepper. You see that? Tiny. And then, of course, a little bit of salt. That's just so the egg has a bit of flavour in it too. Now, I need my whisk because I need to break up my cheese. Good old Once you're happy that you've incorporated everything, you are going to pour all over your pastry case. There you go. Four eggs is brilliant for this size pastry case. There you go. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven. And I'm going to put it in at 175 degrees 
and let this just cook through beautifully until it's firm. I'm going to turn it probably halfway through cooking to make sure I get a nice even cook um, and then give it a little shake like this and it will show you whether it's cooked or not. Don't overcook quiche. I think that's one of the biggest problems with a quiche is people tend to overcook it. You want to shake it, if it stays firm, it's done. Take it out. I'll see you again when this is cooked. Well, here are my rather delicious looking quiches. Absolutely beautiful. There's nothing further to do than to try these out. I'm gonna try it and break this one in half. Should really have gotten a knife. But it's a lot easier for me to use the fork. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Oh, they look gorgeous. Look at this, beautiful. Oh, that is just unctuous. The flavour from the leeks and that bacon running through and where I've put a bit of cheese in there as well. Absolutely delicious. Look, beautiful. This is an overcooked, undercooked. It's just perfect. Remember what I said. When it comes to quiche, you know it's done when you give it a shake and it's not moving anymore. It really, really is gorgeous. I think my sons are going to be very, very pleased with these. I'm very pleased with these. Um, you can actually freeze these if you want to. Um, like most things, you can freeze. Uh, they are best served fresh. However, as I said before, I have lots of recipes for pastry. This is just a basic quiche. Now I've put leek and bacon in here. If you wanted to go for a vegetarian option, pastry stands is, is butter, or you can go with vegetable shortening. But everything else in here can just be cooked minus the bacon and this would give you even a vegetarian option absolutely tasty so I am very very pleased with today's bakes now if you like what you saw and you'd like to try this recipe great just have a go so easy to do but how beautiful of these. If you liked what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe um, to see me making more traditional, easy to make, beautiful, delicious food. Thank you for watching.